I can confirm, uh, because I said so, I think, at the beginning of this trip uh, in one of the first questions that was asked, that we have gone through uh, regular law enforcement channels uh, in enforcing the extradition uh, requests that we've made uh, with respect to Mr. Snowden. Uh, and that's been true with all the countries that have been involved, including Russia. Uh, and so there have been high-level discussions uh, with the Russians about trying to find a solution to the problem. We don't have an extradition treaty with Russia. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, Mr. Snowden, uh, we understand, uh, has traveled there uh, without a valid passport, without legal papers, and uh, you know, we are hopeful that uh, the Russian government makes uh, decisions based on uh, the normal uh, procedures uh, regarding international travel and the normal interactions that law enforcement have. So I can confirm that. Uh, with respect to uh, the latest article uh, that, in part, I gather, is prompted by uh, Mr. Snowden's leaks, uh, you know, we're still evaluating the article because the problem is that these things come out in dribs and drabs. We don't know necessarily what they're referred, uh, what programs they're referring to. We don't know uh, uh, how they're sourced. And so, what I've said is to my team: take a look at this article, figure out what they may or may not be talking about. And then what we'll do is we'll communicate to uh, our allies uh, appropriately. But I'll make some general points. So I'm not going to comment on any particular allegation, but I'll make a, a couple of general points. Number one, uh, the Europeans are some of the closest allies that we have in the world. Uh, and we work with them on everything. And we share intelligence constantly. And our primary concerns are the various security threats that may have an impact uh, on both our countries. The initial two programs that were of concern as a consequence of the Snowden leak had to do with a very particular issue, and that is, were we going around snooping and reading people's emails and listening to people's phone calls, whether that was in the United States or in Europe? Uh, and I responded to that when I was in Europe, in Germany explaining that uh, one program had to do with telephone uh, numbers uh, that were exchanged without content. Uh, the other was very narrowly tailored to deal with threats like terrorism, proliferation, uh, and that all of this was done legally and under uh, the supervision of the FISA court. So that's one set of issues. Now, there's a second set of issues that this article seems to be raising, and that is uh, how our intelligence services operate generally around the world. Uh, and uh, I think we should stipulate that every intelligence service, not just ours, but every European intelligence service, every Asian intelligence service, wherever there's an intelligence service, here's one thing that they're going to be doing. They're going to be trying to understand the world better and what's going on in world capitals around the world uh, from sources that aren't available through the New York Times or NBC News. Uh, that, that they are seeking additional insight beyond what's available through open sources. They, uh, and uh, if that weren't the case, then there'd be no use for an intelligence service. Um, and uh, I guarantee you that in European capitals, there are people who are interested in, if not what I had for breakfast, at least what my talking points might be, uh, should I end up meeting with their leaders. Uh, that's how intelligence services operate. Uh, so I don't know uh, what is precisely in this article. I've asked my team and the NSA to evaluate everything that's being claimed. Uh, when we have an answer, we will uh, make sure to provide all the information that our allies want uh, uh, in, in what in exactly uh, the allegations uh, have been. Uh, but I can uh, – he, he, here's one last thing I'll say. Uh, I'm the end user of this kind of intelligence. And if I want to know what Chancellor Merkel is thinking, I will call Chancellor Merkel. 
If I want to know what President Hulon is thinking on a particular issue, I'll call President Hulon. And if I want to know what uh, you know, David Cameron's thinking, I call David Cameron. Um, ultimately, you know, we work so closely together uh, that there's almost no information that's not shared between our various countries. Uh, and, uh, but I do think it's important for everybody analytically to separate this issue, which is how our intelligence services gathering uh, information uh, about the world versus the particular programs that were initially the cause of this controversy, which uh, uh, I was responding to when I was in Germany.